Come, Mamnal Warren 20. It's time to make your appointment with the Wicker Man. Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover One Twenty here, and I'm here with episode twenty-two of my Halloween horror movie reviews. And this review is going to be for none other than a film, original film from nineteen seventy-three. By the way, I um, reviewed the shitty remake last year, last season, and um, this time I'm reviewing the original movie of it, the one that's actually good. Yes, it's going to be for none other than one of late actor Christopher Lee's most notorious films, The Wicker Man. And no, thankfully not the shitty Nicolas Cage movie. The one that only, pretty much the one anybody thinks of when they hear The Wicker Man. Like, oh my god, like, they don't seem to forget about, they seem to forget this version even exists. Because they always think about the shitty remake. They think the remake is the one only movie out there. Thanks to that stupid Not the Bees meme, that's the fucking version everybody thinks of when they hear The Wicker Man. Ugh. They don't even, they forget about this amazing original movie, and they think the remake is the one that got made. Oh my god. Thankfully, I'm actually one of the few people that knows of the remake, and no, pff, knows of the original movie, the one that's truly the one that deserves to be remembered. The Masterpiece film. The one that stars Edward Woodward and Christopher Lee. And what a rest in peace, by the way. So anyway, what is this movie about? On Sunday, April 29th, 1973, Sergeant Neil Howley with the West Highland Con Constabulary Files so flies solo to Summers Isle of the coast of Scotland. He is there to follow up on a letter addressed specifically to him from an anonymous source on Summers Isle reporting that a 12-year-old girl who lives on the island, Rowan Morrison, the daughter of May, Nor May Morrison, has long been missing. The correspondence include a photograph of Rowan. Upon his arrival at Summers Isle, how he finds that the locals are seemingly simple-minded lot, lot who provide little information beyond the fact that they know of no Rowan Morrison and do not know the girl in the photo. Miss Morrison admits to having a daughter, seven-year-old Myrtle, but no Rowan. As Howie speaks to more and more people, he begins to believe that Rowan does, does or did live on the island, but that the locals are hiding their knowledge of her. He also begins to see that the locals all have pagan beliefs. Their religion, which centers on pro procreation as the source of life. That procreation does not necessarily need to be within marriage and openly flaunts the act of sex, both in private and in public. These beliefs do not sit well against Howie's strict Christian morals. He who regularly attends church prays and accepts communion. Everything that happens on the island seems to be dictated by Lord Summers Isle, whose ancestors bought the island generations ago. Now he begins to believe that Rome was murdered. She's a sacrifice by the islanders to that higher power to ensure a bountiful apple crop, the main crop of the island, which did not materialize last season. With May Day approaching, how he not only tries to find out if Rome was indeed murdered slash sacrifice, which includes trying to locate her body. 
But if there will be another sacrifice on this important day, important day within the cycle of life. Yeah, that's the plot of the movie. So yeah, although there's very little unjustly ignored on its original release, The Wicker Man has since been acknowledged as a true classic of horror cinema, a status that most definitely deserves. Ravely has a horror film achieved such a such as an all-perceiving aura of dread and accumulating such a thoroughly gripping climax, leaving the viewer feeling so utterly emotionally drained as the end credits roll. Although there is very little in the film that would qualify as horror in the traditional sense, no gore, no cheap scares, no supernatural occurrences, The Wicker Man is undoubtedly a frightening experience, is increasingly unsettling moments of weirdness, which includes several oddball sauna dance numbers, creating a palpable, palpable atmosphere of dread that really gets under the skin. Howie is clearly being led to a merry dance, the bizarre pageant rituals and occult happenings witnessing during this day, coupled with obvious sub subterfuge on the part of the Islanders, on the kidding that something terrible is afoot. Yeah. Like, there really is nothing like this film, and that alone, alone has added to its cult status. A troubled post-production, a delayed American release, and some severe cinematic accounts that look like that looks some of the edge of the creepiness have also added to Mystique a significant and scandalous occult-themed movie. There is innocence to the bodgy pageant sexuality that is portrayed with an uneasiness designed to disturb Christians and prudes. It, like, it is a new age on the age of religious practice like diabolical distractions combined, combined with a straightforward mystery, mystery conducted by a straight-laced Bible, thumbing police inspector. And this, the film is... Definitely likely to disturb even today because of its determined tone of bizarre beliefs parried in front of the unbelieving detective as the townsfolk go about their creak, creaky customs with gay abandon and unassuming glee. Yeah. Like the whole film is superbly written and shot, getting its scares from atmosphere and mood rather than blood and gore. Another of its strengths is Paul Giovanni's folk music. The final scene apparently terrified Wood. Yeah, what's interesting is the final scene, the iconic ending scene where Howie is sacrificed in the Wicker Man, apparently terrified Woodward when he filmed it, and it's not hard to see why. It makes an incredibly powerful climax to this motion picture. And, um, and I also really love the performances in this movie. Edward Woodward gives a good performance as Sergeant Howie, and Christopher Lee, rest in peace again, also gave a very wonderful performance as Lord Summer's Isle. Like, like, he was just, he was easily one of the best actors out there. Yeah, who would later go on to, he would later go on to play Saruman, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, among many other great roles in the Count Dooku and the Star Wars prequels, even if his role really wasn't that major in 2 and 3, but, but yeah, he all, but this was actually one of his very first films, and it's it was even one of his best of his career. Like, the whole film is just superbly written and shot, getting its scarce from atmosphere and mood, rather than blood and gore. Another of its strengths is... Oh, I already... Ugh, what was I saying? Yeah. But I, but you know what I mean. The Wicker Man is often described as a pro pageant film. I do not... Which I do not agree with, because it is apparent that they had talents of Summer's Isle basing their time by worshipping their gods, just as Sergeant Howie's faith is ultimately serves him no good. They get its anti-religious, if anything, so I do not really regard it as a horror film either kind of more of a mystery, like, thriller film, like, only one person really dies in the whole movie, I think, I think those of you who've seen the original can obviously guess what it is. Yeah, or even seeing the shitty remake can also guess who it is. <laughs> like, I really love that ending shot, that horror, that frightening ending where they load him into the Wicker Man, and the townspeople just start singing that song. They're marching away. Like, they're, yeah, they're just singing. They're chanting that song. They're, as they're dancing right by the Wicker Man. Wicker Man just singing that upbeat song. And as the Wicker Man just sets fire and how he burns in it. It is probably still a very, very terrifying moment. Easily. And um, what's... Uh, there was even supposed to be a sequel where that was going to reveal that how he survived the sacrifice, but thankfully the director told ordered that sequel to be scrapped because that would have just been stupid. Like, the whole concept of that idea was really stupid. Robin Hardy even hated the idea of him surviving the sacrifice. Because it doesn't make the ending any, any terrifying at all. Yeah. But Howie, um, Howie does kind of come on top at the end because um, 
it hints at Lord Somerzel, because he does kind of hint that Lord Somerzel will likely be sacrificed next time it kind of fails, or they'll probably lose their faith in Lord Somerzel, and they'll sacrifice him next, so... So as he's, like, singing the song, you can then... You could kind of see him standing or kind of shock and disbelief thing, since he thinks... Since he kind of kind of knows that what Howie's saying might kind of be true in the end, so... So even he, so even he kind of has a little fear inside of him as a... A little bit of fear... As how he's being marched away to the Wicker Man, is he's just kind of standing there in disbelief. So, so in the end, um, eventually off screen, the the villain will likely be killed. So it'll likely, both the protagonist dies and soon a villain dies. Movie. So yeah, in a way, kind of nobody really say. In a way, kind of both sides kind of lose. Like forget the so yeah. In the end, forget that pointless, stupid ass Nicolas Cage movie that I reviewed last year. And watch this instead. It gets better with each viewing, whereas the one viewing of the Cage version was more than enough. I mean, you can watch the Cage version as a comedy movie and not a horror movie. This can be watched as a horror movie, though. But yeah, I, man, like, I really wish people would try to think of this a little more. Not the crappy remake we, should have, we never should have got. The Americanized version as I call it. But yeah, check this film out if you want a redeeming factor after one bad remake, and here's how I'm going to rank it. I am going to give The Wicker Man 1973 a 10 out of 10. All right, that, that covers up the 1973 original movie. And now I've reviewed both the remake and the masterpiece original movie. So what's going to be the next episode? Um, the next episode is going to be for a, a sequel to a movie I reviewed last week. I, I think I reviewed it last week. However, definitely not a good sequel. Nope. This is going to be for the first directed DVD sequel this classic vampire movie got. Oh, yep. It's Lost Boys to try. <laughs> Fuck no. I <laughs> can't believe that shitty fucking movie's next. Oh my god. <sighs> but, hell then. That'll be it for this episode. Thank you all for watching. And if you like this and want to see more, and don't forget to like, subscribe to Movie Lover 120.